everybody and welcome to the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast where it's election day. That is when this is taking place and hopefully you guys all went out and voted and hopefully you voted not based on fear of things that don't matter but based on policy and that's all I'll say about it. Wow, that coffee's hot as shit. It's been a rainy day here today. And let's get into this episode where all sorts of fun stuff is going to be taking place. Okay, so with all of this fun stuff said, I really hope you enjoyed the last two episodes with Matthew Buckley Smith. That was um, loads of fun. Um, And I'm pretty stoked to let you guys know that he's going to be in... Blood Rag Issue 5. This comes out this week. Um, I might put it up today, so it might be out now since you're listening. So run over to my Etsy shop and um, take a look at that. It's only a dollar, and there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine poems from nine poets. This this issue is star-studded, let's say some really good stuff and i'll be doing a video about that here soon okay um there's a couple things here guys if you are a diehard if you love this show if you love hearing my voice but maybe you would like to see my face while i do this all you have to do is go over to youtube hit the join button and for as low as i think 2.99 um you will be able to witness this instead of just hear this so that's fun join the crew be a part of the crew we're only a crew if we can all be together if it's just me it's not a crew so with that said other things real quick rate this show these shows are hard to get in the algorithms guys if you are enjoying this content if this is edifying you in any way spiritually artistically creatively or just humor If any of these things are happening, run over to iTunes and give this five stars. Just do it. It would be very helpful to me and I'd appreciate it. And if you're, you know, watching this on YouTube or anything like that, click that fucking thumb, dude, and share this fucking thing. Let people know. And in fact, if you haven't told anyone about this show yet, like someone who you think would enjoy this, what the fuck's wrong with you? Jesus Christ, I would tell all my friends if you had a show, don't believe me, write me and tell me you have a show. I'll fucking tell everyone you have a show, and I'll tell everyone to go listen to it. Fuck me. So, without any further poo let's jam on those motherfucking shoutouts. So, quick, let's, let's hit the Patreon shoutouts. So I want to give a thank you to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. Yeah, and again, if you didn't, if you didn't hear your name, your card got declined. And then let's give um, a big thank you to the crew over there. AM, Patrick, and Alan, thank you guys so much. I love you. Thank you. And now, for the big swinging dicks of the Anarchy crew, who are... Swinging for the fences and hitting balls over the walls, motherfuckers. Those motherfuckers. So I want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, and to Jessica. Thank you so fucking much. You guys are the shit. The Anarchy Crew is the fucking shit. And we're kicking ass. So thank you for that. And... For those of you who don't know, this month, Poetic Anarchy Volume 3 will be out in paperback and ebook. No, just paperback. I don't know. Maybe we'll do an ebook. Let me know if you want to do an ebook. But that's going to be awesome. Very excited. Looking forward to that. Okay, so this episode is going to be a little bit different. This episode is going to be me kind of responding to shit. Because one of the things that I do on this podcast is I give my little afterthought of videos that I've done throughout the week. But it's been two weeks, or like a week and a half, 
since I've done that because I had the Bucks interview for two episodes. So we have kind of a lot to talk about. And so what I want to do is kind of go over some responses I got from some of these things. Talk about it a little bit. On the projecting insecurities episode from October 26th. So, so let's look at this. What kind of comments did we get on this? Slady V had an awesome comment about defeating self-doubt. It said, self-doubt doesn't just yell at me. It grabs me by the throat. That's hysterical. Thomas says, um, yeah, I do suffer from this on a daily basis. I feel that everyone in my life is against me and that I am shit. There are days that I do believe that. It gets reinforced when people in my life try to make me believe I'm a failure in life. It has been told to me many times that I actually start to believe it. It hurts my motivation in things I do big time. Dude, totally. This is one of those things where, like, people can tell you over and over and over again that, like, you're not a failure. And all you have to do is change your mindset. And then that's it. And that sucks because that kind of advice sounds like fucking bullshit. Because it's like, who the fuck do you think you are? You don't know how it is to live in my fucking head. You know? Like, don't fucking say that shit to me. But sometimes you need a kick in the ass. So, regardless of what anybody says to you, okay? You have to make the decision yourself. You have to say to yourself, like... People might think I'm a piece of shit. People might think I'm a failure. But I'm going to fucking do what I do as best as I fucking can. Regardless of what the outcome is. Because I'm going to fucking fight and I'm going to fucking do it. People could fucking think you're a failure all the time, dude. Like, this might come as a huge shock to you. But I'm kind of the black sheep of the family. You know? Like, my whole thing was... Because I don't wear a fucking suit and tie, and because I don't do the fucking nine to five, I'm a disappointment. No matter what I do, no matter how much money I make, no matter how, what little fame I've gotten over the years, um, what accolades I get, um, it, it's not impressive to my family. And I had to just come to terms with that and go, oh, my family is never going to be impressed by anything I do. I got it. I, I understand this now. My family is not my audience. I don't need to fucking worry about that. My friends who aren't creatives, who aren't artists, they don't understand what I do. They, they can't fathom what the fuck it is I do. They don't get it. They're impressed to the extent of, oh, wow, you do all that? That's cool. But that's the end of it. Because it's almost like, oh, he's like some weird man child who's playing with his toys. Like, that's the kind of feeling I get from these people. But the thing is, they don't fucking matter. They aren't your audience. They could think you're a failure all fucking day long. But as long as you're doing the thing, as long as you're writing, as long as you're putting shit out, who fucking cares what they think? So what I say, dude, is just be the fucking best fucking failure you can be. Be a fucking epic fucking failure. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm going to be the best fucking failure I know how to be because I don't give a shit and once you fucking say you don't give a shit, your whole mindset changes and you fucking feel good and you could fucking laugh. And then those motherfuckers who are living rent free in your head, you could fucking give them their little fucking eviction notice and that could be the end of it. And that's it. You know what I'm saying? So just be the fucking best failure you can fucking be, dude. Fuck people, dude. Let's see. Jessica, the soft spoken poet said... I learned by doing the artist's way to find water when I, when we're self-doubting. This could be taking a bath, shower, washing dishes, walking on the beach. Water helps relax us and get our ideas flowing. Self-doubt can't creep in when we're full of great ideas. Now, if you are interested, um, Jessica has on her channel, um, she 
I don't think she's finished it yet. Maybe she has. I don't think she has. She's doing a video series of her going through the artist's way book. Do I think it's the best way to do something? No. But if it works for you, fucking goddamn do it. All of us are different. We all create in different ways. So that's why there's so many different fucking self-help books out there to tell you how to do things, to teach you ways to do things. Because not everything works for everybody. So if this works, and it sounds like it's worked for Jessica, if it works for you, fucking do that thing and fucking do it hard. But what she's talking about, water... Um, and I don't know if this is an astrological thing, because I don't think it is, but it could be. But I am a water sign, obviously, tears. Um, but water helps me too. So a lot of times when I'm feeling like blocked, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, when I'm feeling like kind of constricted or where I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I'll go and I'll just stand in the shower for like an hour. And um, that usually clears me right up. Some of the best ideas I've ever had, I got while I was in the shower. Now, as far as anxiety goes and shit like that, water has another thing. And so this might be like a little helpful thing for some of you. For those of you who get anxious when you're out in public or you get really angry um, you have anger issues or anything like that. If you go and um, turn on a sink, whether it's in the bathroom at the place you're at or in your kitchen or in your bathroom at home, turn on the sink and just put your wrists under the cold water like this and just let the water run right here cold and just like stay like that for a couple minutes. Clears you right up. And just, you know... Breathe, feel that cold ass water on your the inside of your wrists, and you're good to go. And I think that's why a lot of people um, do dishes and stuff when they get angry. Like I fucking do dishes when I'm angry, and yes, I use hot water when I'm doing dishes. But when I first get in there, I let that fucking cold water run on me for a minute. You know what I'm saying? This person's talking about hard work being um, the best inspiration. I don't know. That just sounds like someone who has a really tough job. And so they tell themselves that. And that's fine. Like, I've had very repetitive shit jobs where I kind of, like, would go into, um, I would almost, like, zone out. And, like, I don't want to say leave my body, but, like, I, like, hours would go by of me doing the exact same thing over and over again. And it's just, like, mechanical at that point. And my brain can fucking go do whatever the fuck it wants. And I, that was fine, too. Thank you for that comment. Let's see here. NP Hunt says, I definitely relate to this. And I know a lot of other people who do, too. The thing to remember is that our internal editor and the crippling voice of self-doubt is usually full of crap. It is full of crap. Let's just make that clear. I believed when I put out a poetry book that only about three people would ever read it, but I've had awesome responses and feedback from complete strangers and from people I admire. Even after that, I still feel like this sometimes, and it's a very hard thing to deal with. But people like yourself talking about it and encouraging people to persevere is genuinely helpful. Being creative is such a solitary exercise that it's easy to forget we're not alone in these experiences. Hopefully this will help people get over that hurdle and keep moving forward. Totally, totally, totally. Every single person who is putting themselves out there will always feel like a sense of judgment coming at them. And I don't remember when I talked about this, but like Madonna, okay? And I don't know why like this Madonna quote is the thing I always go to. But Madonna said like when she's playing at a stadium, you know, and like thousands of people are fucking screaming her name and just loving it. If she knows there's one person in the top row in the very back who is hating what's happening, that's the only person she focuses on. She can't get that out of her head. This is fucking Madonna in her prime saying she could be performing in a stadium with thousands of people. And she's still worried about one person not liking the show. Okay. 
So this is just one of these things that we go through. It doesn't matter how far along you are. This will always happen. This doesn't mean that you can't do it. This doesn't mean that you're not good enough because a lot of people think when this starts happening, they're like, yeah, I just, I, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. That's not what that means at all. It just fucking means that everyone goes through that and you just have to fucking get through that. Well, I'm going to read this one here and I won't say who it's from. Self-doubt and loathing are on my ass all the time. Anyone feeling these things, I want to say, dude, I feel you. What I tell myself is I can choose. I can choose to believe, believe those voices and be in a world of shit or can look at facts. It's hard for me to do it and it could take some time to work things out, but you and your work are worth the effort. That is totally 100% true. So thank you for that. LK Mattis says, identifying your doubts, what ke what's keeping you from writing or keeping you from continuing to write? I don't know if these questions are aimed towards me. They just seem like kind of that's what her doubts are. But I'm going to try to answer these as if they were questions. The only thing that is keeping any of you from writing, any of us from writing, is us. Like the comment from the last video I was talking about. Everything we do is a choice. There is no one holding a gun to our head to write or not to write. Although if someone was holding the gun to our head to write, we might actually get more done. And I also feel like, and maybe this is me being kind of a fucking dick right now, but I almost feel like if people were under pressure to like write, like for their fucking livelihood, like they didn't have another job. They didn't have a spouse that supported them. They didn't have any of this shit they would be working a lot harder to get stuff done. And I almost think when you do have a spouse who is working and supporting you while you're writing, that's where a lot of the guilt and the fucking shit comes from because, I don't know, I've never met a couple that this wasn't like this with. They might be supportive and shit, but every once in a while it's like, shit, what the fuck have you been doing all day? I was at work and you just been on the computer all day? Fucking come home, the floor's not vacuumed, dishes aren't fucking washed. What the fuck is that? And this isn't a gender thing, okay? This goes fucking both ways. So there's a part of me that wants to fucking just say to you guys, the thing that I think will help you get rid of the doubt and fucking get going is if you had no other alternative. If you were like... Fuck, if I don't fucking write and fucking sell a shit ton of books this month, I am fucked. That's how the fucking pulp guys had to fucking do it. You know? Like, they either fucking sold their stories or they didn't fucking eat. You know? And that's why a lot of them... Because, like, for Robert E. Howard, for instance, the creator of Conan, there's only a handful of Conan stories, like 16 or 17 or something like that. But Robert E. Howard wrote a shit ton of, like, boxing stories and um, Sailor Steve Costigan stories and um, spicy stories, which are kind of like borderline erotica today. But he wrote tons for those markets because those markets paid. Weird Tales was really the only place to get weird fiction published, like fantasy and stuff like that, like the way Robert E. Howard was writing it. And Weird Tales did not pay well. They paid well when they paid, but they didn't always pay. And sometimes you were waiting months and months and months to get a check from them. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, I would love to keep writing Conan, but fuck, I need to eat and I need a roof over my head. A lot of these dudes would get a call from like their agent or a magazine on a Friday saying, hey, uh, we need uh, 20,000 words about a uh, ship captain on, by Monday. That's like three days. So what would they do? They would write 20,000 words about a ship captain by Monday. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like now everyone's so just like fucking apathetic and just like, meow, meow, type what I type, you know, no big deal, whatever. And that is um, not the way to go, guys. I mean, I guess it is if you like doing that. But, like, especially in today's market, this is going to sound fucked, but if you want 
Amazon to sell your books for you to where you're not having to fucking pay crazy fucking ad fees and all this shit to let people know about your book, but you want Amazon's algorithms to move your books for you and you want to make a living as a writer, write in one genre and have something out every month, like within 30 days. So like every 28 days have a book come out. It's a menstrual cycle, guys. Come on. That's how you do it. That's that's the secret to being able to like make a living as a fucking author on Amazon. I'm, I'm, I'm not even giving you shit right now. That's the secret. So if you can do that, write in one genre and have something come out every 28 days and series books work better, so have it be one character going through a series of things. If you can do that, you can make a living as a writer. Now, this isn't really talking about poetry at all, but you know, my YouTube channel is Matt Wall Poetry and, and this would fall under the and category. So... I don't know. How, how long have I been running my fucking liquor here? Okay, we have time for a couple more here. Fuck me, dude. Oh, that got me all fucking angry and shit for a minute there. What was that about? Fuck. Oh, the terror versus horror thing. Um, I. Margaret says a lot of things I bet are the fault of the 80s. That's funny. Oh, actually, the, the funny thing is I did this whole thing about the difference between terror and horror. For the most part, the thing that stuck was my analogy of um, a pregnancy test. So if you want to know what that was about, um, there will be a link to the video in the show notes. Mindy says, I love the terror. It's all about the anticipation of doom. Totally. Totally, totally, totally. J.M. Casey, um, who actually has a great podcast called Chrononauts, if you dig, like, sci-fi and, like, proto-sci-fi and stuff like that, um, the sense of anticipation, whether in a horror story or not, is a sweet thing. Probably why I'm always into the beginnings of stories, almost no matter what they are. When I think I figured it out, that's when my interest falls off. And that's totally fucking, yeah, been there, dude. Future generations. Okay, let me let me look at this. Okay, I'll, I'll read this one from Shannon. It says, I think I skipped right over the my parents are lame phase. LOL. This is a great message. Matt, I love your authenticity. Ooh, well, thank you. My mom was super creative as well. She was a gifted artist, painter. She used to write stories and songs, and she was a talented interior decorator. But we never talked about creating or being an artist. Compliments have been few and far between, and she never talked about her past or her family hardly ever. So I totally get with where you're coming from and think your kid is really lucky because I'd love to have videos like this of my parents. It seems to me that most parents don't want their kids to really know them as people and vice versa. I mean, my parents have no idea who I am and what I've done. Yeah, it's really fucking weird. Um, and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I was basically doing a video about how if you do podcasts or you make videos on YouTube and you're talking about the things you create and how you create it and what your process is, that will eventually be something for like future generations. And if you are someone who has kids, like your kids can like look back on that because like me and my kid, we never have talks about like why I do the things I do, why I create the things I create. We never talk about that. But maybe after I'm gone, my kid could come back and watch these videos and kind of understand me more and kind of see and hopefully the things I talk about can help my kid when they're doing something, you know? And what ended up coming out of this other than really awesome like comments like Shannon's here is some people they weren't offended by any means but they were they like missed the point they're like oh well I don't have kids so like that that doesn't that that's not for me like I I, I can't relate to this and it's like okay get out of your head for a second and think about other people like after you're fucking dead who cares whose fucking kid is watching you? If you are sharing like the things that make you tick, 
the things that make you create, like the process that you go through. That's good for anybody, especially if someone is a fan of your work and they want to know more about you. But yes, in this video, I use an analogy of me and my kid and me and my dad to illustrate a point. But it doesn't mean like you only need to create stuff and record you doing these things for your family. It could be for anybody, anybody who is into your work. You know, we never know who's going to be fucking like 100 years from now. I mean, fuck, the world might not even be here. But if it is, maybe the Internet Archive is really good and has everything that's ever been on the Internet. I know it's gone back and forth, guys, but you know what I'm saying? If you have the ability to document your process and why you do the things you do, then fucking document it. Again, for future generations. That's what the fucking JPEG said. It didn't say for your fucking kids. Just the people who are left behind after you leave this earth. You know what I'm saying? So it could be anybody. It's not a big deal. All right. Okay, let's do one more. Oh, God. This one is hysterical. So this is about what makes a school or a movement. And the JPEG says, be better with like a question mark. And I'm going to fucking read this one because this fucking killed me, dude. So um, Brian at Bookish <laughs> left me this comment like in... Qu like it, it's in quotes okay whatever this is what it is okay well i'm gonna do a voice to it because if you don't do a voice it doesn't fucking sink in like well he said removing his pipe exposing the elbow patch on his tweed jacket historically schools have been created and named by critics and journalists he exhaled a long blast of cherry flavored smoke and continued your Ashcan school, your confessional poets, your beatniks were all labeled as such by media types who often meant the labels as insults. <laughs> he turned back to his book and continued to smoke his pipe as everyone else thought. What an asshole. That's so fucking funny. I fucking died, dude. Oh, Brian nailed it. Yeah, so... That just fucking cracked me up. You know what? There was a comment to a prior podcast episode that I wanted to hit. Okay, and this is back on episode 20, um, where admitting I'm wrong and imposter syndrome. This um, comment is from Dimitri Reyes, who is an amazing poet and an amazing fucking person. So um, go check him out. Um, his channel is Dimitri Reyes Poet. Or, um, I think that's what his website is, too. I'm not 100% on that. Anyway. Peace, Matt. I listened to this podcast and another on my food shopping trip this morning. I'm loving the quality and you get... And you got something great here for sure. Thanks for your opinions and insights. This might have been the vid where you mentioned workshops and what, in quotes, old hats end up doing after they've got some recognition and we're in a space where they could teach themselves. Sorry. Do they still attend workshops? You kind of covered it. They can and many do. When you mention something along the lines of authors communicating either in person or through writing and creating what evidently becomes a school, this that's pretty correct as far as my understanding goes. This comes in the form of salons, where writers come together to trade ideas and party. This could be seen with the modernists who were chilling at Shakespeare and Company, um, how Mary Shelley's Frankenstein started as a campfire story with a bunch of writers kicking it, and the Ginsbergian Ferlinghetian parties that took place in the San Fran area. Sometimes it's more ideas than poetry traded, but it's all charged to this game at the end of the day. And that right there, that's awesome. And I really feel like just that whole idea of chilling with your crew and stuff like that, that's so anarchy crew. Like, And we're going to be doing more shit like that. But um, 
yeah, that that's fucking awesome. And it's funny because when you see videos of the gatherings that these old poets would have, they're hardly ever talking about poetry. They're usually getting fucked up and having a good time. So um, that that's good to know. That's good to know. Contemporarily, poets that are the status of getting paid bigger bucks for workshops and stuff are still active participants among groups of other writers who are in the same realm. And because you mentioned the literati is so goddamn secretive and insular, they trade ideas and how-tos amongst each other, I'm led to believe. And if those poets teaching those workshops aren't shitting on others and are actually creating community, they're of a mindset that they are also students too. Still learning. They just have had a few extra experiences. It's a trend I see growing and I'm starting to see more people with your thought process in those higher literary spaces and it's so important. Again, Dimitri, thank you for that fucking comment. There's so much in there. And I think one of the things that is so important to realize is that no matter who you are or how far along you are, you're always learning new shit, whether you want to or not, okay? You're always learning stuff, whether it's a new technique with your writing, whether it's a new program you have to write your stuff in on your computer, or whether it's a new social media platform that you have to learn to use to sell your fucking work. We're always learning. Don't ever get into a mindset where you feel like, oh, I don't need to learn anymore. Like, I, I'm good where I am. Because if you start doing that, you end up being like that dude who's still on Facebook and nothing else. Okay? You need to be learning just like you need to be growing with the technology that enables us to be able to get our work to the people. You know what I'm saying? So whether it's following fads, checking trends, like you don't have to do any of these things, but it's good to be aware of it. And if there's anything good to take out of those things, fucking take it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Dimitri said a lot of shit there that was um, awesome and actually answered some questions I asked back in that episode. Just after reading that, that's the thing that stuck out in my head. So... Uh, Poetic Anarchy. We're doing a really cool project this month. And it is... um, I don't want to tell you too much about it. But it's basically us writing like a autobiography of our life through poems or very short pieces of fiction to put in a chapbook. And um, the prompts for it and stuff are really cool. So... Um, If you are interested in jumping into the Anarchy Crew, again, hit the join button um, on my YouTube page. And you can find that by just going to IHateMattWall.com and going over. Or if you just go to PoeticAnarchy.com, you could take the first five classes and see if it's something you even want to fucking do. Um, And you do that for free. And then if you're still interested, hit the join button. And um, there's like 100 videos up there now. Um... And guess what, guys? If you join the crew, or if you join the Anarchy crew, I should say. Well, even the crew videos. Any videos that I post that are just for members, there are no ads. So for those people who are like, Jesus Christ, there's fucking more ads than the... So there you go. Real quick. Get the um, free ebook from my website, IHayMountWall.com. There's a little box that says, get a free ebook. It is the um, 2021 yearbook of my short stories and poetry that I put out in 2021. The book came out in 2022, and after the end of the year, it'll be a new book. And so you won't be able to get that book anymore. So if you want that book, you have to fucking join the fucking mailing list before that. Now, what happens if you join the mailing list? I'm going to send you stuff maybe once a week, maybe every two weeks. And it'll be basically me talking to you about just shit, like the music I'm listening to, the books I'm reading. Um, And then if I have recorded any music and put it up somewhere, um, I will send it to you before like anywhere else. 
if um, I will be putting poems in every week that haven't been released yet. So you're getting something, you're getting a little bit. And when you join that mailing list and I send you those emails, like respond to me, tell me what you're listening to. Tell me like whatever I'm talking about. Like, it's not just me like, hey, I'm gonna be selling a bunch of shit to you right now. It's me trying to fucking open a dialogue with you and tell you what I'm up to and find out what you're up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a back and forth thing. So, um, and in fact, I'm going to be doing a video here pretty soon um, about the um, glut of emails I've been getting lately and talk to you about some of the stuff that I'm getting off of that. Uh, but anyway, also, if you um, have a manuscript that you want to start sending out or you want to put out and you want me to look it over, or if you want me to help put together a marketing plan for your next book or anything like that, if you go to IHateMattWall.com slash mentorship, you can see um, different things that I offer for you there if that's something you're interested in. Again, Blood Rag number five out now, we'll say. Um, my chapbooks, Last Chance is out now and the next time you hear from me there will be another chat book a new chat book um that is going to be limited to 50 copies and um should i give you a pre well, i'll tell you what it is it's called two night and if you remember one night the chat book i did where it was 20 poems i wrote in one night this one is like one night part two and what I did here is everyone in the Anarchy crew got together on Zoom and we all wrote as many poems as we could in one night. And um, so my two night book are the poems that I wrote during that night. And hopefully other members of the crew will start putting out their chat books of what they did that night as well. Um, so that'll be coming out soon here. Um, Again, um, my book's up on Amazon. You can get um, End of Everything. Oh, End of Everything, Fingering the Mundane, as far as poetry books. And then as far as my fiction, like the Black Star books, Black Star Murder, Black Star Killer, Black Star Creature, Black Star Revenge, Black Star Blaze, um, the Hank Bradshaw books, Dead Dame Walking, Dead Dame in a Trunk, Dead Dame on the Floor, Dead Dame Curse, uh, the Zombie Zero books, uh, the Brain Hunter, the Zombie Hunter, the Hunted Hunter, and the Alpha Hunter. Uh, Black Market Blood Drive, the Shallow Jallow books, Crystal and Relapse, the Gavel, um, my kind of pulpy um, superhero guy. Not really super, but just a hero. Um, and that's like Fight Night, um, City of Darkness, Bodies in the Hangman's Noose. Um, and then did Final Judgment ever come out? I don't know if I ever put that book out. I don't know. We'll look at that. And then a bunch of other stuff. Hitman Black, um, Bloodless Romance, my... Um, Horrywood is on Kindle Vella. Um, if you want to go check that out, the Poetic Anarchy books are up on Amazon as well. And again, Poetic Anarchy Volume Three comes out this month. My music is on every streaming platform. Oh, and then this is a big thing too. I'm going to start doing prints of my art. So um, I got to limit it to a number. I don't want to just do like prints out the ass forever, but. Um, yeah, so um, that's coming, and um, there it will be limited. So that way, like you guys don't have to pay like a hundred to three hundred dollars to get the original. You could just pay like thirty bucks for a print. You guys see what I'm saying? So, but the way I'm going to do that is every month is going to be a print. I'm not going to do mass amounts of everything all at once. I'm just going to do one, and when they're gone, they're gone. Um, let's see. If you have any comments, if you want to talk about anything, if you want to tell me to shut the fuck up, if you want to try to hook me up with your mom, whatever, like whatever you think you want to talk to me about, go ahead and drop me a line. I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Let me know what it is. If you want to be a guest on this show, which next time we talk, there will be a guest on this show, and I will let you know who that is when they get here. Um, and if you want me to come teach a Poetic Anarchy crash course um, on anything that you do, like any streams you have, anything like that. If you want to do something like that or just have a QA and a or something like that about publishing, about poetry, about writing, about pulps, about whatever, drop me a line. I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com and let me know about it. So until next time, everybody, type hard, keep buying my books, and go fucking vote. But this video probably won't come out until tomorrow. 
so it doesn't fucking matter. So I hope you voted because this world we're in now, this is your fault. Whatever it is, good or bad, you did this. So I'll talk to you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.